little update review tonight. Um, these are my uh, Derby Brogues from Surveyor, um, and this is a six month review on these. So these have been worn almost daily uh, for my work and my commute to work, so quite a few miles on these now. Um, obviously in the last few weeks, not so many, we've all been working from home, I think most of us have at least, all the way across the world, um, strange times indeed. Um, but what better time to catch up and reflect on some of our favourite boots. Um, so as I say, these have been worn daily for work, um, these have been really, really comfortable and um, really a pleasure to wear. Um, if you follow my channel, you know that I've previously owned, reviewed and worn the uh, the regular uh, smooth shiny derby boots from uh, Surveyor, so that's the eight hole boot. Um, and I've also run those in comparison with a pair of Made in England Doc Martens. Um, so as we found out in those videos, the construction, the heritage, the style between Solivair and Doc Martin are very similar. You know, the background is that Solivair used to make Doc Martens on license, um, and a lot of the design cues and construction techniques are very, very similar. Um, what I have found is, universally with both pairs of Solivair, is that they are a better constructed boot, um, and the soles are much, much harder wearing, which is essential for me because I'm pretty heavy on my boots and that's quite an important factor for me, how long the soles are going to wear for. So we're six months in, um, there's still plenty of tread, there's beginnings of some flat patches up on the front there, very little wear on the heel, uh, we'll come in for some proper close-ups in a minute, um, but generally wearing really well. Um, for comparison, Dot Martins, these were worn for six months in rotation with the uh, other pair of Solivair. Lots of smooth patches, almost end of life uh, wear on the heel there, so sort of it's going over to the side. Um, so Solivair outperformed Doc Martens by my estimation. If you want to see more on those comparisons, please check out my channel. So let's just go over some details on these boots. First of all, the sizing. Um, so they do have sizing charts on their web pages, a useful guide when you buy online, as much most of us are currently. Um, what I did find is that they they ended up with a very generous sizing um, for me. Um, so my original surveyors I got in at eight and a half, which is half size up from my normal sort of eight, um, and I found those a little on the large side. Even with thick socks, they are a little large. So with these and with that in mind. Um, I don't think they're exactly the same last, but very similar last, very similar sizing. I went down, back down to my true size 8. Um, for me, these are a really good fit. Um, I don't think I'd want to go down to 7.5, um, but the 8s are plenty room enough, um, roomy enough. You know, thick socks, really nice, great for the winter months. Um, one thing that I would say is uh, they're leather lined, and we'll get in for some proper close ups in a minute, but leather lined, so plenty warm, um, and actually for the winter months, brilliant. So thick socks, leather lined boots, really, really nice. Um, what I have found though is that um, they're warm, and um, compared to a couple of other pairs of my leather lined boots I've had in the past, they're not as breathable as some, so they're definitely a warm boot. I'd say for me, um, wearing thick socks, I like these in the winter. As we come into the summer months, I might swap them out. So, you know, they're a lovely, uh, warm winter boot, leather lined, fantastic. Um, leather lined boots I really do like. Um, really nice level of comfort, slip on and off. And certainly with these, and this sort of style of construction, uh, what I found is during the break in period, um, the, the heel cap is an essential component to your braking experience and having leather lined really does take away some of the rub points at the edge of the cap just where it might catch your ankle normally if you've had Doc Martens you'll have experienced that um, and with a leather lined boot with these leather lined boots really really makes braking easy. In general I found all the sole of air boots pretty easy to break in to be honest um, compared to things like Red Wings, Doc Martens, Solvers, I find pretty easy to break in. Um, one of the key uh, key factors to breaking in this style of boot, I find, 
is getting that good fit between the sort of the top of your foot and your heel just so the your heel sits back in that cup um, because without it sitting back there you do get that little slop which brings about a little bit of rubbing leather lined really helps that out but um, that that initial fit there is really important so do persist with uh, with sort of cinching your boots down to breaking the tongue to get that snug fit because it will pay dividends um, these um, really nice soft leather leather tongue um, no bellows construction really easy to break in um, slightly more construction on the forefoot here um, so with the broguing detail uh, extra le le layer of leather um, but really really pretty easy to break in in terms of care um, always very very low maintenance I find the sole of air boots they're a sort of a, a corrected leather so they're they're sanded uh, or treated to get this smooth finish and then coated um, so there's very very minimal uh, treatment you need to put into these um, but what I do find a little bit challenging is finding the right product to get them to look smart and certainly with these uh, brogue boots you kind of want them to look a little smart I think so what I have found is that things like the uh, the Doc Martens Wonder Balls and um, I've already stopped using this on these sort of uh, corrected leather boots. It just doesn't soak in enough. Um, great if you've got a, a greasy leather or um, an unfinished leather, but um, for this finished shiny uh, leather, it doesn't really work. So I've been looking at other products and what I've ended up using is a good quality uh, beeswax polish. Um, this has got naphtha, which is effectively alcohol, um, in it. So I think, I, well, it certainly creates a lovely shine, as you can see. Um, but I think it also has a little bit of penetrating ability uh, to get into the into the leather, as it's got that spirit base. But I've been really pleased with the effect it's had on these boots. As you can see, it's got a nice shine, and that's not really taken a lot of work. Just a, a quick wipe over with this, and then finishing off with a, a good polish with a brush, with a stiff brush. The other thing which I use to make sure these look nice and uh, maintain their sort of smart look for the office is, if you look in there, a nice pair of wooden uh, shoe trees. And that really helps sort of iron out the creases um, and just keep the leather looking as nice as it can. In terms of styling, um, obviously a broke boot, for me, brogue boots are a sort of a formal or semi-formal sort of smart casual look. And for the office, I've been mixing these in with initially uh, some chinos, but I recently picked up some lovely uh, double black uh, denim and some double indigo denim, which I think uh, really pairs well and allows you to take that sort of smart casual look into the office with a shirt. So I think it's probably about time to get in and look at some close-ups and then we'll wrap it up. Coming in for a few close-ups here, uh, we'll start off with the sole. Uh, as you'll probably know, this is a sort of a welted sole, so it is recraftable. Um, unlike many manufacturers, some of their, as do Doc Martens, use a heat seal. Uh, so you can see there's a hard black uh, upper layer um, and then that's heat sealed onto the translucent, uh, more sort of bouncy sole. This can be uh, re recrafted as I say, um, so they make a very affordable uh, replacement sole available, um, but you do need to go to a specialist cobbler to send it off. On the sole there you can see after six months of fairly heavy wear, you're starting to get a little flat spot there, um, slight rounding off of the heel, nothing significant partly down to the way I walk, um, but plenty of tread still offered up. Um, just by way of comparison, um, Doc Martens, worn for significantly less time really, because these were worn in, in rotation with another pair of solar airs for six months. Huge amount of uh, smoothing there, heels rounding off significantly. Um, not only is this a softer compound, um, but they do, the tread pattern offers less wear. Having said that, um, I do find the Surveyors to be a heavier sole. 
and uh, slightly less bouncy. You know, the Doc Martens, that initial bounce is really quite pleasant. Goes after a while, so they don't quite have that bounce, but I'd take uh, longevity over that. Um, the finishing on the sides there, smooth finish, as opposed to the, the ribbing that you'll see on Doc Martens. And actually for this style, um, something that I'll be bringing to the office or do bring to the office, I kind of prefer, prefer that to a slightly more traditional formal look. Same goes for the stitch. Um, obviously Doc Martens famous for their uh, yellow stitch, orange stitch. Um, this slightly tighter and grey uh, stitch around the edge I think does look a little bit more uh, smart for the office. Um, one thing that's interesting to me um, is that that stitch is cosmetic only. So um, the Doc Martens stitch is actually part of the construction. Um, this is almost a uh, callback to the heritage of Sun of Air and simply done for cosmetic uh, reasons. Um, if you want to find out more about the construction of these, uh, check out Rose Anvil's channel. He's torn these apart. Really interesting to see how they go together. Um, as you can see, it's got a nice shine on it from the, uh, the beeswax uh, boot polish and some really nice broguing details, full brogue boots. Uh, I do I've always enjoyed brogues. I think they're just aesthetically really pleasing and uh, and really nice broguing details throughout the boot. Um, going up to the top there, you can see leather lined and we'll just swap boots and uh, I'll show you the insides. So unlaced, we can take a look on the inside so you can see fully leather lined, a little heel pad at the bottom there which is, uh, just gives you that extra bit of uh, stability under your foot, extra bit of comfort. Um, and the leather lining I've found really, really useful uh, in the break-in. Just helps the, the foot slip back in there um, and removes any sort of pinch from the heel cap on your ankle. Uh, if you've ever tried to break in a pair of Doc Martens, you'll know that's definitely a rub point. And one of the really important things about achieving a good fit and removing that sort of rub point is making sure the boots cinch down nicely. Now a lot of that's to do with getting the tongue broken in and um, with this particular model the tongue is not uh, attached apart from obviously at the bottom uh, so it doesn't have a bellows tongue so that really does help uh, the break-in experience. Just to uh, show you what I mean there here's a pair of the uh, the normal um, sort of air derby boots and you can see fourth, uh, fourth hole down halfway mark you've got a bellows tongue. Now that's great for uh, a bit of waterproofing um, but on a slightly more formal boot like this uh, maybe not essential. Well that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned so far is price point. So when I bought these boots I think they're £175 and that puts them at exactly the same price as the normal uh, smooth black um, uh, derby boot eight hole offering from Sol of Air. Now this is very much the boot that you'd want to go for if you wanted a uh, Doc Martin style look and uh, if you've got any doubt about your in your mind which one you might choose check out my video Sol of Air. They're built like Doc Martens used to be. I think that's really what people are saying and that's what I've found so always consider Sol of Air over Doc Martens. Obviously you've got a choice over the yellow stitch or grey stitch, an aesthetic choice, but if you want to go for wear and durability, British made boots, sort of as the ones it's at. Um, but same price point, so £175, not cheap by any stretch of imagination, um, but I would say this offers a lot more um, bang for your buck, if you will. Um, leather lined boots, really nice detailing, um, a much smarter and to be honest more interesting look than the traditional derby boot. Um, you know, I think they represent really good value in this sort of market. Um, yeah, so check them out. Um, I've been really impressed with these. They've been great to wear around the office and a perfect fit for, for the office for me. Um, if you haven't seen my channel before, please check it out. Um, find out a bit more about the comparison I did between uh, Sol of Air and Doc Martens. Um, I did a side-by-side -side comparison, alternating them over a six month period to try and give them a really fair side-by-side -side trial. If that's of interest, check that out. Obviously, massively into boots. 
uh, including sort of heritage footwear from America, so your thoroughgoods, your Red Wings, that sort of thing. Um, everyday carry, fountain pens, pen knives, bit of cycling, bit of guitar. Um, check the channel out, you might find we also have some common interests. Um, if you thought this video was useful, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, I'd love if you subscribed, and I'll see you for the next video. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.